eyes, the black critic guy. So I just woke up about an hour ago. I, I don't really remember what time I woke up because I, I go in and out of sleep. But if it looks like I'm tired, that's the reason why. And part of my morning routine is that I go straight to my laptop, I watch a couple YouTube videos, look at my Twitter, look at my Facebook, and I noticed that a lot of people were all abuzz about these new promotional photos from the upcoming sequel to Wreck-It Ralph titled Ralph Breaks the Internet, Wreck-It Ralph 2. And of course, I had to see what the fuss was all about. And let me tell you, one of the photos got me extremely excited. The other two, they look fine. They introduced new characters. I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna briefly talk about those and then I'll get to the one I really wanna talk about. So this photo right here shows a character named Yes. And I swear to God, I, I don't know if this is actually true or not, but I have a sneaking suspicion that wasn't her original name. I think her original name was supposed to be Yas. But they knew that if they did that, it would be terribly dated and cringy to do. So thank God they changed it to yes instead of yes, yes, queen, yes. But she's supposed to be like this uh, character that looks up trends on BuzzTube, parody of YouTube. Um, I have a sneaky suspicion she may be the main antagonist. I am not too sure because there's not a lot of details on who's the enemy, but I, I'm, I have this weird feeling, there's something about this character just kind of screams antagonist. I could be wrong, I could be right. And then this other photo shows a character named Nosemore. Uh, he's a search engine, and he's voiced by Alan Tudyk. And I'm very curious to see what type of voice Alan Tudyk's gonna use for the character. And he looks pretty fine, you know, the search engine that's per you know, that makes sense since they're going into the internet. But like I said, I don't really have much to say about those two. The one I really want to talk about is the photo where Vanellope is surrounded by all the Disney princesses. So she basically stumbles into like a back room where all the Disney princesses look like they're getting ready. Maybe they're part of like an online show or something like that. I'm very curious to see what exactly is happening in this situation? How did Vanellope end up in here? And so, when the movie comes around, I'm super excited to see how that's all gonna unfold. But I must say, the thing that got me really excited is that it feels like validation. About three years ago, I wanna say, I made a top 10 video of the best Disney princesses, in my opinion, and number four was actually Vanellope, because she is technically a Disney princess. At the end of Wreck-It Ralph, it's revealed that she was the princess of Sugar Rush. So I was like, oh wow, that's an interesting twist. And the way that sh this, they handled this character, they gave her a lot of personality. She's very different from the typical Disney princess. And that's what really stood out to me. But the fact that she wasn't getting any love from Disney for being a Disney princess, that really hurt my feelings. Cause I'm like, she's such a unique Disney princess. She deserves to be amongst the other collection of Disney princesses. And to see this shot where it, they, they specifically picked Vanellope to encounter the Disney princesses. Not Wreck-It Ralph, they picked Vanellope. For me, that felt like validation after almost six years of trying to say that she deserves to be among the ranks of great Disney princesses. So that was the one thing I took away from this shot. It's so good to see all the Disney princesses together. I would like to see how they interact with each other. You see that some of them are kind of like bundled together in like this sort of click. Like you see Cinderella brushing Pocahontas's hair, which is interesting. I didn't think she would pair up with her. I thought she would be best friends with like Aurora or Snow White. Like have the old school princesses, they stick together. The new school princesses, which is interesting because if you look, You'll see Elsa, Anna, and Moana, they're all together in one group. And then you got, I don't know why it's so weird that they put Tiana all the way at the end by herself. I, I always thought she would pair up with someone like Jasmine or something like that. And no, not, not because they're both dark skinned. I just think that both of them, since they're very sassy and headstrong, they would probably connect with each other more. I noticed that Ariel's not in this picture. Now she could be probably on stage or I don't know if she's in her mermaid form. That's why she's not in this shot because either she's a mermaid or she has legs. Depending on which one they choose, that's the one we're going to see. But it is confirmed that Ariel is in it and you, you have to put Ariel in this film. If you're gonna have all the Disney princesses, Ariel has to be here. If it wasn't for Ariel, the renaissance of Disney princesses would not 
would not have happened. We wouldn't have gotten Pocahontas. We wouldn't have gotten uh, Tiana and Elsa and Anna, all the new school princesses if it wasn't for um, Ariel. But there was another thing that really stood out to me about this picture too. And it's the fact that there is actually one Disney princess that is missing and has not been confirmed to be in the film. And it just breaks my heart because as much as Disney did take a step forward at acknowledging that Vanellope is among the ranks of Disney princesses, there was one before her that I still feel like gets the short end of the stick. She's completely shunned and nobody remembers that she's a Disney princess and she's more than deserving to be among the ranks of the Disney princesses. Who am I talking about? Well, if you saw my top 10 video, which I'm sure many of you didn't, but my number five favorite Disney princess was Kida from Atlantis The Lost Empire. People forget Kida was a princess. She was the princess of Atlantis. And it still breaks my heart to this day that Disney is not willing to acknowledge her or add her to the Disney princess lineup. I get it. You know, Atlantis was not a very popular film. She's not a very popular princess. But damn it, she was one of the most proactive princesses you've ever seen. And she's freaking awesome and badass. She has one of the coolest designs, a unique backstory. This is, she is one of the most interesting Disney princesses that nobody cares about. And the fact that she's not getting any love, not even a little bit, you can't even have her in the lineup just to say, hey, here's Kida. And come on. I would love to hear Kree Summer as, as Kida again. Why can't you just put her in this movie? Why can't you add her to the lineup? Why can't you show her some love, Disney? You did it for Vanellope, can we also do it for Kida? I don't know why she's not in here. It's, it, to me, it was a no-brainer. I guess maybe Disney forgot about her because it's during that era where 2D animation wasn't doing well and Disney was kind of in a downhill slump. It's the end of the Renaissance, so maybe they just didn't think about it. But hell, if you can think about Lilo and Stitch and that, and that film came out after Atlantis, I'm sure you can think about Atlantis The Lost Empire and think about Kida. I know it's a little rant and I'm not super duper mad, I'm just a little disappointed. Because you guys did tremendous adding Vanellope or having Vanellope interact with the princesses. But why isn't Kida in this lineup? Why wasn't she in this photo? Why is she not part of this, this collaboration? She is more than deserving to be here. Another person that wasn't added, although I do feel like it's a bit of a stretch. But I would have loved to see Meg included in the princess lineup in this film now. I may be one of, you know what, I might be the only person that considers Meg a princess because through my logic, Zeus is the king of the gods, so that would make his son Hercules the prince of the gods, and at the end of Hercules, Hercules decides to stay with Meg, thus making her the princess of the gods, because they end up getting married, so that was my logic that, okay, well if Zeus is king, and Hercules is a prince, that would make whoever Hercules marries a princess. I mean, if Tiana could automatically become a princess because she married uh, Prince, F or, oh, what's his name? Of Maldonia. <laughs> uh, I don't remember his name, but if she can become a princess after marrying Mr. Frog Prince, I'm sure Meg can become a princess after marrying the Prince of all the gods. But again, that, that's my logic. That's my way of validating her princess ship. But if Disney doesn't see it that way, I'm actually fine with that. But it would have been nice to see her included. I miss hearing the voice actress who voices Meg. She has probably the most distinct voice of any female character I've heard from a Disney film. So having her in this would have been unique to see. Maybe, maybe she might actually pop up. Maybe they'll surprise me. But yeah, I like the photos. They're very interesting. It's, I'm excited to see all the Disney princesses interact. But I am a bit let down that Kida is not in the lineup nor is Meg, but hey, you get, you win some and you lose some. They're at least acknowledging that Vanellope is among the ranks, so I will take this as a small victory. But let me know, let me know what you guys thought about the set photos as well. Do you find these new characters interesting? Are you excited to see all the Disney princess to, princesses together in one room? Let me know in the comments below and stay tuned. I have a very important video coming out tomorrow. Tomorrow. Do not miss it. Anyway, I just want to share my thoughts out there. I hope this video is not longer than 10 minutes. If it is, apologies. I, I just had a lot to say. But 
Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, peace, YouTube.